Howdy, my name is James. I'm going to cover some problems and suggestions I had after installing my Max Jax M6K lift. Um, I looked for video information like this online when I went to install this, but I couldn't find anything, so I'm making this video in the hopes it helps someone else. Uh, it's about November of 2022. Uh, I installed a lift about a year and a half ago, actually. I made a video for it and uploaded it to YouTube, but YouTube never finished processing it, and then it disappeared from my account. Uh, I was reminded by a buddy I needed to make this video, so this video is obviously for a little bit, uh, a little bit older one, even if you're seeing this on day one. Uh, so maybe some of this stuff has been corrected. I don't know. Um, I'm going to talk about what it is I experienced. Uh, I got a list of problems and a list of suggestions. I'm going to go through them, so that's what I'm going to be looking at when I look over there. Uh, I'm not a YouTuber or videographer, so I'm not going to be cutting this down. If I can figure out how to do it, I'll make chapters down below, either in the description or. Uh, you know, little clickable ones down in the in the uh, status bar. Uh, let's get into it. Uh, first thing, this is the manual I got with it. Printed out, came with a lift. I bought the lift directly from Max Jack, so no middleman or anything. Uh, this was not the right manual for my lift. Close, but not exactly the same. Mine was made in December of 2020. I got it about April of 21. Uh, this one, this is from September of 2020, where my finger is pointing. That's where you can find uh, the information, at least on the ones that I had, uh, the manuals that I had. So after discovering it was wrong, I went and printed out the PDF, uh, or sorry, uh, got the PDF and read that. Uh, so this is the one that came with the lift, and if I point to something in here, which I will a couple times, know that it was no different in the PDF than this, which is the reason why I'm, I you know, have a physical copy here. Uh, so I'm not pulling your leg or anything. These were exactly the same between the two. Um, so go and get the newest manual, or at least make sure the manual you have is the one that's correct for your lift. There were a few things in here that were, there were a few things that were minor, but there were a couple things that were major in here uh, that was nice to see in the updated manual that, but I ended up figuring out before I actually got the updated manual. So um, that's enough about the manual. That's all there's to it. Just get the new one. Uh, most important one I can probably say about this is the width. Uh, so if you get your manual out and you look at it, you're going to have a diagram that looks something like uh, this, which talks about the width that they want you to set things to depending on the car you're working at. Maybe that's readable on the screen, maybe it's not. Um, long and short is they break it into four categories. Sport compacts, mid-size, light trucks, heavy duty, or full-size trucks. Uh, what I was working on or planning to work on was a, I had a small sports car, I had a mid-size hatchback, and I had a large SUV. Um, so the shop that I'm in won't really accommodate full-size trucks. I figured if I was doing something with a large SUV, it'd be pretty minor probably. Uh, so I kind of set up everything around the, uh, the, the mid-size and, you know, small sports car I had and the idea that maybe I'd have a light truck uh, in here at some point. And so what that uh, ultimately meant in the manual is 120 inches was the width they suggested for that. Mention the width in case that's changed in the manual. Um, long and short is that was not wide enough. And the really confusing thing, uh, at least on paper, is the fact that the large SUV I had fit fine. But the mid-sized car and the small sports car I had didn't fit fine. Uh, and the reason for that is, is a little bit confusing because you would think the opposite would be true, obviously. Uh, but I drew this little diagram to try and help and explain. Um, so I hope this comes through. It looks like it's coming through on my little viewfinder here. But the gist of it is, is that down here I have the posts. And then if you imagine these other lines are the arms, if you were to imagine a very extreme example where the pinch welds or whatever the pick point on your... Uh, um, thing you're trying to lift are very close together, like this far apart, you know, 20 inches far apart, then the arm would stick straight out like this from the post, right? Again, this is an extreme example because I'm trying to illustrate the point, which I didn't think of until after I'd run into the problem, all right? But the arm will be straight out like this. Now, this would be a little bit more normal, like what it is you deal with, with kind of a more normal set of pinch points or pickup points on the vehicle. And this dotted line represents how close the vehicle would be to the post if you use this normal one. Now you can see that this straight line would put the edge of the vehicle much further away from the post, okay? And that's ultimately what ended up being the problem, is on the small car and even the mid-sized car, the pinch welds were close enough together that the arms, even at their most um, compacted length, even if, you know, all the way, as short as they could be, pushed the vehicle far enough away from one post that the arms on the other side extended past the pinch welds on the side, on the other side. So when you put those vehicles on, you could get any two pinch wells or any two lifting points to make contact securely, but you couldn't get all four. If you angled the car just right, maybe you get three, but you couldn't get all four to lift the vehicle. 
So if you put them on the left side, then it would push it too far over, and the right side would get pushed underneath the vehicle to extend past the pinch points. You can't make them any shorter from that point. Uh, same with the you know front or rear, however you want to look at it. Any two you can get. Ultimately, I had to buy another uh, mounting kit and push back one of these about five inches. Uh, what I was going to do is push them both back about five inches because it makes sense once you see the holes that are mounted there. Make it ten inches wider. But the truth is, is that you should just plan to make it at least 130 inches in width. Uh, in the case of the manual, they recommend in this manual and in the one that I downloaded, 135 inches is the maximum width, and I would say just plan around that. If I had known that when I got the lift before I installed it, it, uh, it would have changed how I did this. Not drastically, but because of the way my floor is set up in here, I can't just move them back an equal amount from each other. Uh, I can't move one easily offset 10 inches, so I'm just gonna be stuck with 130 inches I would have been able to do 135. Now, my car is a 91 MR2, and that's pretty small, so I don't expect, I don't even think a Miata has, you know, would have very much on it in terms of, like, having the pinch welds closer together. So I think that'll accommodate everything at 130 inches, but I was pretty shocked to find that my small car was the issue when I had it nearly at full width. Um, so, yeah, that that's what it is. Uh, it, just for comparison's sake, the minimum width they have listed here is 105, and the maximum width is 135. So I guess, realistically, I put it exactly in the middle of their recommended widths, but not according to what they had here listed for vehicles. Um, I could go on and on about that, but really that was just a, a horrible, a big deal to uh, have to tear the whole thing apart and then have to redrill the holes and reset it up again, especially after... You know, I didn't bring in the vehicles just to test fit them. I brought in the vehicles because they needed maintenance, and then I have to wait a few days to get the kit, and blah, blah, blah. I don't need to go on with it. Set the width wider than you think, as wide as you can make it, uh, which may make it not viable for you. Um, I contacted the manufacturer about getting shorter arms. They don't have anything for it, uh, which is pretty standard for, like, a Chinese company that's constantly making revisions. So um, it is what it is. Uh, just make it wider than you think you're supposed to. Okay. Um, let's talk talk a little bit about the anchors. Uh, so the, the concrete anchors that you drive in, uh, there's a couple things that I want to talk about here. Uh, the first is probably the, let's talk about the most important thing, uh, which is that the instructions have an, uh, a problem with them. Uh, like I said, these were the same in both the ones that I, uh, that I, the one that I printed out and the one, or the one, the one that came with it and the one that I downloaded. So every time I show you this, it's the same in both of those. Hopefully it's been corrected by now. This is the picture they sh the pictures they show setting up setting up the anchors. All right. Now the words here they're correct, but the pictures are wrong, and I want to talk about it for just a second. Um, or at least some of the words are correct. Uh, you could get it correct if you just followed the instructions, I think. But if you look at the pictures, you may be confused, and that's because these pictures are wrong. So we have two sets of pictures here. Uh, this one is the first set of pictures. It's just one picture, I guess. This is correct. This setup right here is correct. So if you do, if you set this up like this, that's correct. The problem is in this second set of pictures where they show this anchor being pressed up against the mounting plate and the mounting plate between the actual anchor body itself and the nut. That's not correct. If you do it that way, you won't actually set the anchor on the floor. And setting the anchor on the floor is what keeps the lift from falling over. Now, let me talk about that a little bit more and then I want to add some caveats to that, all right? Like I said, I had to buy another kit because I had to remount that. So this is what one of the anchors looks like, all right? I left the bolt in here because I want you to understand where the top is. So that's definitely the top, and this is definitely the bottom. So this is the part that goes pushed into the concrete. Um, on this is a collar. This collar is separate than the rest of this body. That's why I can spin freely. I need to point out a couple things. First of all, I believe I have this set up correctly that you can see these little nubs on this collar stand proud of the body right here, okay? So the way this anchor works is you drill your hole, and you tap this in. So these little nubs should already be causing some friction, and in most cases they are going to, so I'll talk about that in a second, but they should cause some friction. So you hammer it in, and then you use that nut they set in that little gap they had right here to pull the anchor body up against it. With these nubs causing friction against the concrete, they get pushed down, pushed that way, and you can see that this has a little wedge shape, so it drives this collar out, makes it larger in diameter, and that pushes against the concrete, and that's what sets it into the concrete and prevents it from being pulled out, all right? The problem is, the way they have it set up in the manual, is that with this plate right here, this body can't move up at all. Now, you can set it using the plate, but you need to add the 5 8 inch plus the plate thickness so that you can drive this into the ground, because when you start setting it, this top of this 
anchor right here needs to be the 5 eighths of an inch below the surface of the concrete. Okay, but I'm just some jackass on the internet making a video. So don't take my word. Instead, look up a brand, Wedge It, W-E-J-I-T, that's Whiskey Echo Juliet uh, Dash India Tango. And they have a product called PD58, Papa Delta 58, which the PD stands for Power Drop. 58 stands for 5 eighths of an inch. And you will find something that looks very, very similar to this. Uh, this is in metric, M16-2, in case you're looking for replacement bolts or a replacement anchor. Um, but you can look up that Wedget brand, and they have instructions for setting that. And if you look at those instructions, they are exactly what I'm telling you to do, all right? Uh, so, again, don't take the word of some jackass on the internet because you made a video. Uh, so, understand how to set the anchors before you set them, because if you... Depending on how you look at the manual, you may not actually set them in place. Now, just as a little caveat to that, um, when I was drilling these holes, uh, they, they went in hard for me. I think I just didn't have the right drill, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but they were not super straight and even like I'm used to uh, holes that I make being drilled. Uh, holes that I drill, whatever. Uh, so when I put the anchor in, it took a lot. I had to get a big hammer and drive it in. And in that case, setting it while it's still important, you probably wouldn't have a complete collapse of the lift uh, the lift post if you didn't set it correctly, right? So in a lot of cases, you might be able to get by with this, but don't fucking take the risk, right? If, if you're looking at this and thinking, I don't know if I did that right, go and do the setting procedure and make sure it's set up correctly, all right? If you got your hole drilled nice and straight and it's got nice pleasant sides, and it's it's then you're really at risk of this, right? So it's almost like the better job you did drilling the hole, the higher risk you are at these bad instructions affecting you. Uh, okay, enough about that. Um, I'm going to talk about those. Uh, actually, let's talk about setting the anchors a little bit more. Um, so when in the instructions, they tell you to use the mount of the base plate for the post to drill the holes for the anchors. They say use that, you know, as a guide, drop the drill bit in and just drill straight down. Problem is, is that you can't do that because the post gets in the way of, of the drill. Um, now my recommendation, I'll talk about this a little bit more, is to get a rotary hammer when you do this. I, they may recommend it too, but uh, a regular hammer drill is right at the limit of its capacity uh, if you're talking about um, drilling these holes. They're 7 eighths inch. They're big holes, right? So it's right at the capacity for it, but even with a hammer drill, which is much smaller than a rotary hammer, uh, you are uh, not going to be able to drill straight down with the post right there. It's going to kick it off at an angle, and you can't really afford to do that. So if you need help moving the thing around, which I think most people won't, but if you do, uh, make sure you get the holes marked or at least started to drill and then, you know, get the thing moved out of the way because it won't work uh, otherwise. Uh, let's talk about the rotary hammer and the drill I used for just a bit. So the drill that I used was a brand new DeWalt 8.5 amp hammer drill. I had just moved before I got the lift and my hammer drill disappeared somewhere in the move. So I just got a brand new one, figured I was going to put put it to work anyway. So... Uh, that one was not really enough to do it. Every time after I drilled every hole, it was hot to the touch, not scalding, but hot enough that I was concerned for it. So I had to wait and let it cool down between each hole that I drilled, and it cost me a lot of time. I'm not the kind of guy that's gonna go to the store to save an hour worth of work. Like I'm not gonna go rent a rotary hammer because I wanna, you know, save an hour worth of work. And that's kind of the way I, I pictured it, right? Like I don't want to spend the money. I don't want to take the time going to the store and taking it back. Uh, but if I were to do this again, or even when I have to redrill these holes for this other post, I'm going to go rent a rotary hammer. So my suggestion is to do that. Even if you have a good hammer drill at home, um, it's it's rough work, and it, it's kind of at the limit of what the, the hammer drill can do. And one of the things that I have a concern about is, like I said, I'm normally pretty precise in what I do, and I, I didn't expect my holes to be as, as kind of jagged and, and not as, you know, not perfectly straight and aligned and have nice sides. Uh, but they definitely were in that category, and my guess... My best guess is that my, you know, hammer drill was just not quite up to the task. Um, also could have been a flaw with the way I did it. I'm not perfect and I don't do this for a living, right? It's the first lift I've ever installed. Uh, so entirely could have been a problem with me, but that's my suggestion. If you're watching this video, hopefully that's helpful to you. Um, all right. Uh, along with, since we're talking about drilling the anchors, let's talk about one other aspect of this. Um... There is, at the bottom of the post, um, you have an access hole to access the uh, one side of the hydraulic ram that actually does the lifting of the car. When you get the lift, the lift posts are going to be laying on their side, and they're going to have instructions pretty early on about connecting the dry disconnect fitting that goes into that ram, the thing that actually provides the hydraulic pressure. And they want you to do that almost before you do anything else. 
my suggestion is not to do that for two reasons. Number one, uh, the fitting when it goes onto the ram actually sticks out and kind of blocks one of the holes that you need to drill. Uh, I think you can probably push it out of the way enough to actually gain access to drill that hole, um, you know, or, or start that hole before you move the, the hole, uh, before you move the post out of the way to drill the rest of it. But the thing is, you're putting on a dry disconnect fitting, which is a pretty expensive and not particularly robust piece, and you're putting on it a pretty good distance away from where it actually connects. So I would say don't do that. Uh, wait until you get the holes drilled, keep the cover, you know, keep the plug in the, the access hole there, the threaded hole for that and uh, get the holes drilled and then take care of putting that fitting on because it's just gonna get in your way and you risk damaging something that's relatively expensive for how fragile it is. Uh, plus, you know, Home Depot doesn't carry them, so, and they're probably metric, I don't even, I don't know, I didn't damage one, so I don't actually know what their thread pattern is, so odds that you can go to the hydraulic shop and get one are probably low, is my guess. Thankfully, I didn't have to experience that. It's just a suggestion. Um, one other thing, oh, okay, so if you follow my advice there, then when you get done with that, you're gonna to have to lay the post over onto its back in order to pull out the ram and the carriage in order to install that fitting. So when you do that, this is the top of the post, obviously, there's big red handles up here. When you go to lay it on its back side, uh, go ahead and just top, put a cinder block or something similar right underneath the top right there. Because when you have to disconnect, when you have to take the carriage off of the hydraulic ram, there's a lot of things that have to be lined up in order to get it back together. I'll save you some time by doing that. It probably took me about, if you have a second set of hands, you have two people there, it's no big deal. You don't have to have the cinder block. But if you're doing it by yourself like I was middle of the night, uh, when you pull the carriage off, there's a lot of things that have to get aligned. And it's, it took me about 10 minutes to get the first one done. And I put the cinder block on the second one. It took me about one minute to do it. So there you go. A little, little suggestion. Hopefully that helps out. Uh, last thing about that dry disconnect fitting. Uh, I have to use my hands here because I didn't bring props. Oh, try not to drop it on the floor. Um, at the bottom of the hydraulic cylinder, um, the hydraulic cylinder is running up and down like this, so it's installed. The dry disconnect fitting comes out a little bit horizontal to the ground, or horizontal parallel to the ground, and then it kicks up at about a 45 degree angle like this, all right? Now the hose that brings power into the hydraulic ram, uh, or hydraulic cylinder, comes out of this like that and arcs up, and so it ends up sitting about, you know, like eight inches off the floor, right? And it eventually settles down into the floor, but it's just a big tripping hazard, and so I looked at that when I was setting this all up and I said, I'm gonna go ahead and take that dry disconnect fitting, like I said, comes out of the ram, parallel to the floor and kicks up at a 45 degree angle. And I'm just gonna rotate it in one direction because it'll uh, shrink the size of that loop, that tripping hazard that's sticking up off the floor. Um, that looks good on paper. And when you line it all up, it looks like there's plenty of room. But the problem is the hydraulic ram doesn't have any locating mechanism down at the base plate for the lift. And so as a result, when the hydraulic ram gets pressure, it moves around somewhat. And if it moves to one of its extremes, it can actually crash that dry disconnect fitting into a part of the post. So it seems like a clever idea. Don't do it because it, it doesn't work, it turns out. Um, all right, let's see. I think I've talked everything about mounting plates and holes and dry disconnect. Okay, um, next thing is the flow divider. You have one hydraulic pump and it has to go to two places and so they put a flow divider on here which is a, a pretty nice little piece honestly it makes your life a little bit easier going forward um the reason i'm mentioning it is because the flow divider that i had in my hand and the instructions i had on the paper did not line up all right now i looked at it and i have just the tiniest amount of hydraulic experience uh and so i just said i'm pretty sure this has to go like this and that ended up being correct and what ended up being correct for me was this picture right here. So that picture was correct for me, but the words over here didn't line up with the physical thing I have. And if you can't see that picture super well, if it's not focusing, uh, the way it is, is there are two hoses running in on the left and one hose running out on the right. That's, that's the, hang on, that's the power cart right there, right at the tip of my finger, right in front of the toolbox. Um, so the reason I mentioned this is because it was a little bit confusing to me. I figured it out. Uh, I'm not sure that any of my experience was necessary to figure that out, but when I had to call them for support on something completely unrelated, uh, the very first question out of the first two people I spoke to, uh, whose mouth, whatever, first question they asked me for two separate people was, is this related to the flow diverter? And those are the only two people I talked to. So clearly they have an issue with uh, people getting this installed wrong. So pay attention to that one. Uh, when you're doing it, make sure you have it hooked up right. Uh, speaking of the flow diverter and the power cart, uh, there is, you have to put in some sort of hydraulic fluid. They have a hydraulic fluid recommendation or they say you can use ATF, automatic transmission fluid. 
that's in the manual. That's not me, you know, making up things. Um, the long and short is that I went with ATF because it's more available to me, as I imagine most of you will. But it says seven quarts. I bought eight because that's two gallons because that makes a lot of sense. It took me eight and a half to get it filled up to correct capacity. Uh, not a big deal in any way, but, you know, if you know that when you're at the store that you need nine quarts, it costs zero effort versus getting eight. And if you're at home and it's midnight and you're trying to get the lift working, uh, it's really kind of a big pain in the ass to have to wait until the next day to go and, and get another quart of hydraulic fluid to find out what the next hiccup is there. So uh, bleeding it did not take very much. It took me only like maybe three ounces. So it's not like I over bled it or something like that or bled so much out. Uh, so, you know, 7.9 quarts wasn't enough and I had to go buy, you know, put another half quart in there. So maybe it's only 8.4 quarts or something like that, but eight and a half is about right. Um, okay, let's see. What else do we have here? Uh, right, okay. So first thing is um, when you drill the holes in the floor, in the concrete, like I said, this may have been the fact that I only had a hammer drill instead of a rotary hammer. You know, maybe my concrete was very... Too much aggregate or something like that i don't really know but i know that in the end after i did everything on one of the posts i had four uh anchors that were pretty much straight up and down and one that was kicked over just a little bit not much at all but unfortunately there wasn't enough room for the uh the bolt to come in and hit that without crashing into the base plate uh rather than get out the grinder i swapped the posts around because something i noticed while i was dealing with them is that the holes in the posts they're not like laser cut or cnc cut i, I don't know how they're how they're made uh, but they're not precise post to post. So if you find yourself with one of your posts being a little bit off, uh, try swapping the posts around. Or if you move it to store it and you need to bring them out and they don't fit, try swapping the posts around because the holes aren't exactly the same between the two of them. Um, let's see. Right, okay, so I mentioned customer support before. I mentioned I had to call them, and I had a couple issues that I needed to talk to them about. Um, email them. Uh, their phone line is is not very good. Uh, the people I dealt with there were not particularly helpful, and it took a long time to get through. The email was very responsive, uh, very good at getting back to me. I, I resolved one of my issues just with a few minutes of email work, and, and in less than half a day, uh, you know, we had the matter resolved and the parts were on their way to me. Uh, so if you have to deal with their customer support, email was a hundred times better for me than, than dealing with them on the phone. Uh, okay, so let's see. Let's talk about, I got two more things left. I'm trying to get this, I'm not going to make it under 25 minutes, but I need to talk about this one. So this is called a safety weldment. I would call it a safety catch like every other normal human would be, would, uh, but that's what this is called. This is the bit that goes on the outside of the post. Uh, this is an extra one I have because this was not the right part. This was the wrong one sent to me and I get the right one sent to me. The reason why I bring it up is because this, you can see the difference in thickness between these two sides, all right? So this big thick side is what catches the lift when you lower it onto one of its uh, stops, right? Um, and this part right here, this handle, is to set it either into the lift or the lower mode, all right? You can see this handle is pretty loose. That's important. That needs to be loose. It can't be difficult to move. It can't have any, any meaningful amount of friction. This needs to be very loose uh, on here. Not, not so loose that it flops around, but if, you, if it fails that test, you're going to need to grab, you know, some lubricant and sit there and work it until it becomes loose or, you know, worst case scenario, some valve grinding compound or something like that uh, to get that to free up. If it is sticky, if it doesn't want to fall like into position, you, you know, like I just showed right that, like you, you can let go of this and it'll stay, you know, in position like that, then you have a problem here, which is that the, the safety weldment won't go into uh, the lift mode automatically. It's a clever little system, and basically what it is is that when you have the, the system in um, uh, lifting mode, so you're lifting a car up and you expect it to be held, uh, it's in a position like this, and when you're lowering it, it goes into position like this, and that means the, uh, the stops will push down on this, push this out of the way, and, and not stop on, the, uh, um, on, on this catch right here, all right? When you go to lift it, if it's in, this is the lowering position right now, when you go to raise the lift up, those stops will catch this thing, and push it out of the way, and then this will be in a position where it can catch on those stops, all right? Very simple, good idea, good plan, uh, good execution, no complaints about it. The issue is, is that if this is stiff, what happens is when this safety catch, or when the, the stop comes up, it pushes this partly out of the way, but not all the way out of the way. And you can see there's a little bit right there, and that's enough for it to get out of the way. And then when the lift comes, to be, when you lower the lift down onto one of the stops, you know, to work on the vehicle, it hits this, and puts it back into lowering mode, 
and then the the whole side that whole side of the lift can come down uh it, there's nothing stopping it all right so make sure these are loose now i mentioned that because i got two sets of these the wrong set that shipped with it and the correct set and both of them had one that was stiff on there and then once i got the thing going i found out that that was an issue okay uh last thing i'll mention and this probably doesn't reflect well on me uh but in my defense, when I was when I made this mistake, it was probably about one in the morning. It was after a long day, and uh, I the issue was is that I was flip flopping between the PDF that I had and this manual, and I I was getting a little tired and a little frustrated doing it, and I didn't pay attention to this. But I'm just going to mention it to save you some time. This is the instructions for building the power cart. You know that thing that I pointed out over there, uh, the thing that holds your pump and your hydraulic fluid and things like that. All right. Uh, I hope that this will focus. Let's see. Okay, so on that plate right there, there's eight holes. And now that you're looking at them very closely, like I didn't, it's pretty obvious to see that those eight holes are not symmetrical. They have, there's an up and down to that plate. Put it, put it in the right way, otherwise you get to disassemble the stupid thing like I did. Uh, this was further exacerbated because um, that card in that picture is not the card that I got. And the difference in those cards was shipped in a package separate from the cart pieces. And I didn't have them all laid out on the floor right here. I had it in a different, you know, part of the house while I was doing this because I didn't have enough room for all of that. I didn't want them to get all dusty while I was drilling holes. And so after making that mistake that I just pointed out, I then had to go and find this other cart piece and then take the cart apart and do it again. Again, that may not reflect well on me, but, you know, if someone had just pointed out, like, hey, make a note that these holes are not the same, that would have made my life easier. Um, there's actually, on the PDF that I had, which I can't show to you, it didn't have any holes. Uh, so I didn't even, that's the one that I was looking at, that, that I was like looking at the parts list and trying to find everything that I needed. All right, uh, that's it. Um, I am not a professional YouTuber, as is very obvious, and I'm not a professional videographer. Uh, if you uh, if you find this helpful, great, fantastic. Uh, if you want to say thanks, you can just say thanks in the comments below or something like that. If I'm feeling, uh, yeah, no, just say thanks in the comments below. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. Uh, I don't care. It just would be nice to me. Like, I'd love to hear, you know, someone say thanks that it helped them out a lot. Uh, anyway, good luck with it. I hope this helps.